Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConaughey at YouTube with a, another discussion lecture video. These seem to be very popular and I shall most likely continue to do so as I'm not set up and ready to go for the honey airbrush art skills or the scratch building one yet. Uh, weather is a bit on the tough side and work is uh, pretty full on. I do have enough time to gather some pictures, write down some ideas and deliver something that is still uh, quite uh, useful even though it's not as uh, visually helpful or instructional when I usually actually build or colour something in front of camera and present that. Anywho, if you guys do have any questions or requests as I'll pump these out uh, every now and then I'm very happy to uh, explore uh, various different uh, topics if it is uh, theory in nature or uh, what you can actually uh, practically achieve or look out for as per the theme and title of the video everything you need to know about painting Gumpla we'll be exploring quite a few uh, points one would necessarily have to uh, research explore know learn before they can competently paint and finish a kit unfortunately today with our uh, Facebook and all these uh, other uh, social medias uh, people are exploring and are uh, learning discord all of that they do not archive as well as the old forums and you don't really have a start tutorial uh, area where you're assaulted with uh, everything that the community agrees upon as being a great starting point even uh, YouTube with um, its wealth of uh, tutorials and information does struggle in uh, organizing and categorizing everything if you do not know what to search also a big issue when asking a community sphere for uh, advice and preferences can be met with uh, beginners, uh, teaching beginners and especially uh, the spread of uh, misinformation or preferences which may suit one individual but not necessarily uh, others or the better good for where you can source material, suit your skill and uh, whatnot. Uh, this can be particularly frustrating or hard when certain uh, brands or particular uh, popular styles are forced upon when that is not the direction you individually can go in due to your circumstances or one to due to uh, artistic standards or how you want to finish your kits. What I hope to achieve with this video is giving the viewer the options and the information to each direction and option as a introduction and once they've got the uh, keywords and aware of the equipment and product that's available to them they can do further research either through my content and channel or Google around and see what uh, other modelers uh, also have to offer. Definitely utilize multiple sources in your research before uh, attempting to uh, trial on a finished sample kit or full model. Before we get into anything, we'll start with uh, misconceptions, uh, why they may not be uh, fact and opinion before we uh, go into any of the processes or theories. Only use hobby brand official paints and never uh, industrial or generic paint as it will melt the plastic. Now there has been cases of uh, painting and uh, warpage or damage occurring to kits but these are unverifiable and uh, what exactly the modeler has done is not too clear you do have to paint your kit in a reasonable uh, to fit uh, manner such as a uh, brush spray or whatnot though I wouldn't be surprised if some were to submerge or dip parts into a large body of paint uh, parts however cannot survive a pure thinner or being uh, plunged in them for a period of time and will damage warp melt or completely dissolve and if done so in paint it will be uh, completely uh, ruined or too thick though you can use anything that is marketed or fit for plastics 
on the instruction or recommended label. Anything that is uh, lacquer for uh, automotive use or other industries is uh, perfectly fine. A uh, few of the higher end enamels work out quite well as uh, some of the acrylics and ranges from artistic paints. We'll cover that fairly shortly, though most paints in industry is made or blended for a purpose and the most important element is the vehicle or thinner as well as the consistency of the paint. Some paint has uh, other additives and thickening agents that leaves uh, streaks or textures and is completely uh, not relevant for the main job, though it can be utilized later for terrains, dioramas and uh, unorthodox methods. That will be for different videos. You need to wash your runners or parts before building and painting as the molding process utilizes a release agent and your paint will not adhere or stick. This is a huge misconception. Uh, Bandai, as well as other standard industry injection molding manufacturers have no need to use a release agent as melted plastic does not stick to tool steel. There has been cases of Eastern European micro uh, companies that has had a film on their plastic though this could be for all sorts of uh, reasons, storage or um, prolonged exposure in a factory environment. It is recommended by the manufacturer that paint can be applied directly to the plastic unboxed and uh, wrapped. No degreasing is required. It is only recommended to clean your kit if you do a fair amount of uh, scratch building. Leave it in a prolonged uh, dusty environment or get some sort of uh, grease or contaminant uh, on it but this is just before the painting stage when it's built and not on the runner. Uh, many communities and individuals will ridicule modelers for painting an entire kit on the runners before assembly. Now this is an old method and recommended back around the 80s and uh, the 90s. It's uh, no longer considered ideal and is obsolete due to the need to repaint areas where the numb mark is and you're still graced with a physical seam. Though if the part in question is color separated and does not need to uh, utilize with another part of the same color and showing a seam, it can be painted uh, on the runner for uh, easel handling if you're happy to retouch up the uh, nub mark. Though for very small parts that is not ideal or near impossible to hold to paint is ideal as the only trouble you have later is the nub, especially if it's not so visible. Some modelers like to pay tribute to this uh, former method of modeling and display runners in a shadow box painted up with the runners untouched or also colored. This is a very interesting and contemporary way of uh, displaying kits as a form of uh, decoration around the home. Some people recommend that you can recolor large components or an entire kit with Gundam markers, Gundam marker sets, and to save money you could go to a completely uh, different, cheaper brand of marker such as uh, Copic or other paint markers. Now just a bit of a background, the Gundam Markers is a product by uh, Gunzi, the same company that does uh, the Mr. Color Lacquers, which happens to be the official Gundam color sets. They work with uh, Bandai and uh, Sunrise. They are color matched to the plastic that's injected into the molds based off the uh, anime art. They are lacquer paint in a marker though they dry too quickly during application and does have a manner of uh, showing street marks. This product was specially designed for replacing foil stickers in model kits such as high grades. Instead of applying a sticker where it should be colored, you color in that very small area with the tip of these uh, fine markers or fatter markers. Some of them are also fulfilling in panel lines and uh, doing effects such as weathering with the real touch. They are however far too expensive and not ideal for recoloring a whole kit or painting larger areas. The issue with something like Copic and other paint markers is they may be a uh, different type of paint or chemical formulation altogether. They won't bite 
or uh, adhere to the plastic very well and they're not very uh, true or stable in their color. Uh, bleed free with the plastic and all sorts of problems result in a very amateur finish. Improper use of these markers are considered quite wasteful and is seen as being uh, very lazy. There is a lot more to uh, painting that you can explore and achieve uh, something that's not as uh, restrictive as what comes out of a pen and at the end of a uh, felt tip. It's uh, something to pretty much avoid unless uh, you're quite content with the uh, color of the plastic and wish to do small touch-ups. I do not mean uh, any form of disrespect to anyone who enjoys and uh, utilizes uh, these markers. Mr. Kawaguchi does display some unorthodox uh, methods in um, its use for the snapping bare plastic uh, community. Uh, not really covered on this uh, channel or in this uh, video. It's also to be pointed out if you do color large proportions of your kit or use other type of paints including lacquer, uh, doing the seam lines or f other uh, smaller details with the paint markers will not work and you'll uh, risk damaging your markers and leaving a very bad uh, finish on your kit. Please avoid the marketing and hype around the Gundam marker airbrush. It goes against the manufacturers recommended of use even though it is funnily enough uh, recommend by them it leaves an orange peel uh, gritty finish we'll explain that shortly and has more or less been rejected by um, the community peers and modelers uh, most are uh, mocking it and creating uh, memes by recreating the effect of sticky taping a Gundam marker at the end of an airbrush and finally, polyurethane paints used or some products even claiming to be as designed for purpose for mecha or gunpla modeling. Uh, there is a color range that is very suitable for mecha kits and there is quite a few mecha uh, components and figures in the wargaming statue metal uh, community as well as uh, the Warhammer game that is not uh, articulated sits on a base and uh, these paints are fit for purpose for those in uh, blending and sitting where they struggle is uh, adhesion they uh, wrap and vacuum around a part rather than bite or into eat into the surface and have a, a tendency of uh, chipping peeling off or um, getting marks or uh, just being completely removed from articulation use uh, playing and attaching and remo removing components when they're color separated and uh, post paint assembling which is very very important as well as posing when building a uh, Gundam branded or Kota Bikir branded uh, articulated mecha models uh, the brands are including uh, Vallejo, Army Painter, uh, the Badger uh, line, and a lot of uh, small uh, manufacturers that utilize the same dropper uh, mini bottle. Also, when uh, using them, and if you do uh, not heed this advice, they contaminate extremely easily. Uh, if you have uh, airbrushes, paintbrushes, whatever, you can only use a body of water for thinning or cleaning or an airbrush or a paint just for polyurethane. If it gets a whiff or a smell of any sort of previous thinner or paint, the liquid uh, paint that's at the consistency for application will immediately um, harden and turn into a gelified uh, consistency that's uh, no longer useful for um, hand painting applications and will definitely not run through an airbrush. With these two immediate um, issues, I choose uh, not to utilize it and being the weakest of the class paints, it does uh, struggle sitting on top of uh, other products when they're fairly fresh and not quite cured though other products cannot sit on top of it such as enamel or lacquer paints with the risk of eating in and um, suffering casualties. There is uh, ways around this but the potential of your paint uh, and work being damaged especially for a long-term project it's uh, best to uh, walk away from these paints and explore something new for this element of the hobby. 
If you do, however, still choose to use it no matter what, and masking's also out, can't use uh, tape or any of those products, there are other um, prominent and skilled Gundam modelers who do, and you'll be able to follow them up for uh, advice and utilize their work in progress videos, tutorials, and uh, that sort of stuff. Now we'll explore some frequently asked questions. If you have a background of figure painting, Warhammer, or uh, Wargaming, and you are fairly competent or covered all the uh, theories and methods to make something that was uh, satisfactory, you're completely suitable and able to utilize many, if not almost all of that in this uh, hobby. The surfaces we are going to be painting is a much uh, wider, larger, and uh, considering the detail to uh, the realm that you've come to till now, Gundam models are really, really bland, really, really uh, boring. And there's uh, pretty much an open canvas to go crazy with uh, shading, textures, shapes, masking, whatever you desire and whatever direction you're looking to get into. Do not forget to bring along the concept of unique uh, modifications and independent uh, designs into this game. That aside, there are a few new tricks and concepts uh, definitely to learn uh, with the whole aspect of uh, build up, pull apart and reassemble after uh, painting. There is a couple of tricks, uh, once uh, utilized and mastered, it'll work out. Shadowing and uh, visualizing the whole piece together being painted in parts can be a tad difficult, though with a line art drawing of the object in front of you to get the notion of uh, shadow and highlights will be uh, very, very important and quite uh, helpful. The concept of doing a base coat uh, colouring, highlights, lowlights and detailing it can occur. If all you've got is the old citadel paints and a heap of uh, paint brushes, uh, those methods uh, will be very time consuming. There are a few tips, tricks and budget ways around things to uh, speed up the process. But doing your first few projects as so would not hurt or kill anybody to see how it would pop out. Uh, regardless, go for it, it would be absolutely fine. What we've just talked about with the figure painters and wargamers is also the case for any military modelers, other style of uh, modelers, toy makers, and any sort of uh, painting craft artwork that utilizes any sort of form of uh, non-porous uh, surface. Uh, people who have worked in automotive or body prepping um, will definitely uh, recognize quite a few elements that we're going to cover and uh, theories. Uh, more or less uh, anything that's in your paint shop uh, besides those giant paint guns can be uh, brought in. Uh, thin them down a, a bit further, of course. When we are talking about uh, concerns and issues of the hip pockets, you can uh, budget as well as uh, save a lot of money by avoiding um, name brands and going for convenience opposed to sourcing out an alternative. Uh, name brand airbrushes or paintbrushes can be quite expensive bought straight from the hobby store or a uh, hobby retail online, though there are countless amounts of other purpose uh, airbrushes, paintbrushes, as well as uh, paints available in your country and where you are for a much um, easier access. Though if we're going into hobby paints, finding the right budget paint can be difficult, though once you've sourced all the colors of the hobby paints that you require for a project or a range of projects, 10 to 30 mil can cover quite a substantial um, area of uh, surface. So you'll only need to restock on core colors and primers occasionally. In the way of a budget vehicle or thinner, it is very, very easily accessible that's completely chemically compatible with the products you're using. There is no excuse to buy hobby branded thinner whatsoever. A few notes about budget that is heavily covered in my YouTube channel, 
as well as other uh, content that I produce. Looking in the description section below, I'm going to put a huge library of all paint uh, resources that I have and you can look at them in order of uh, the direction you want to go to. If we are talking about airbrushing equipment, Chinese manufactured compressors and airbrushes are sweeping the world like absolute crazy and with a little bit of work performs just as well as anything else. We've uh, talked about uh, the thinner, but for your three main classes of paints we'll talk about, acrylic, enamel and lacquer, your local automotive or hardware store will have the alternative. Each topic will definitely cover that. In the way of paint, that is a much, liquid, uh, a much uh, greater risk, though what you're looking for is liquid consistency paint, not uh, paste. When you explore any sort of the textured stuff from the hardware store, house paints, all that sort of thing, feature stuff, that could cause a lot of problems, damage airbrushes, brushes, and it will uh, leave streaks almost guaranteed. If we're exploring um, artist paints, they are aware that people are uh, looking for uh, different uh, consistencies. If it's a canvas paint and you've got raised detail and whatnot, opposed to uh, something that's a far more finer going onto fabrics, something like a dye, washes, and they also definitely cater towards the airbrushing side of things. If it's airbrushable, it's definitely um, also hand paintable. What I have a tendency of avoiding is uh, watercolours, any sorts of um, acrylics that are marketed as uh, safe, water soluble, alcohol soluble, that sort of thing. Uh, they either do not have the properties to bite or adhere to uh, the plastic, or their pigment density, uh, how much colour you get opposed to uh, how transparent it's going to be, vehicle and other uh, additives, that it's not going to look too good and doesn't matter how much you uh, build up and allow each layer to dry. You're either wasting a lot of time or you're going to have uh, some sort of a thick mess. Oils and enamels, they can look absolutely wonderful and a quality enamel can work quite well. Though the cheaper they get, the bigger problem you have with uh, drying and uh, maturation until it uh, hardens. Some of these applied uh, really, really thick or moderately can dry over uh, many days in a wet state, even to weeks, or just permanently um, stay sticky. This is an issue for handling, this is an issue for paints on top, masking, everything. Uh, artistic oils probably absolutely avoid unless you're doing some sort of uh, weathering technique or something that is uh, quite uh, advanced though any sort of very quick uh, dry enamel um, that is of a high quality in a hardware store setting that would be um, ideal and uh, rattle cans are not too bad either they have a tendency of separating quickly both in the can or the jar so it needs a thorough shake and uh, stir in the rattle can you got to shake for a long time. Tips on that coming up. When it comes to being cheap, where it's all about is your synthetic acrylics, also known as lacquers, uh, particularly ap for application on plastic out of a rattle can or out of a rattle can or tin for automotive uh, purposes. Generally, they all utilize the same thinner there would be a standard use for cleaning and a premium use which would have uh, retarded spilt in to slow down the drying time. That is absolutely perfect for uh, general use. When you do get um, a few basic large quantities of paints or smaller quantities of all the different uh, colours you want, uh, mixing can occur. So if you get your primary colours and an artistic colour wheel, you can go absolutely uh, to town with that and buying quantities of uh, one litre uh, if you've got a lot of time and uh, no money. They do have a drawback of being the most chemically harmful paint. Uh, the fumes is um, a bit on the toxic side. It's quite smelly. It must be used outside or a dedicated work area that you can uh, vacuum the fumes out wearing uh, the masks 
and all that sort of thing. Its bright side is the colors are very vibrant. It's uh, compatible with uh, all products and other brands and types of synthetic or lacquer paints. They're cross compatible with uh, all the different type of uh, thinners. And uh, once applied, uh, almost primer is not required they eat and melt slightly into the material where it sits on nice and smooth and they dry pretty quickly according to heat or uh, weather so excess heat does make them uh, chemically harden faster the correct application can make them be handed around a few minutes mark and they'll reach absolute uh, maturation after a few hours where if we're looking at uh, the other colors it's an absolute uh, gamble and experimentation is required now a bit of a boring section though very very important especially talking about some of the stuff that is uh, on the cheaper end or the industrial larger quantity end of the scale paints are all chemicals each chemical with their um, allocated a uh, vehicle a thinner is highly toxic does turn to vapor and evaporates uh, very very quickly yet lingers in the air and uh, highly flammable do not use it in the family area where people congregate or live it will uh, just must up the place for a very long time and also prove to be a breathing hazard to yourself and others others might be very uh, sensitive to the fumes and get headaches migraines or sick quickly if you get sick while utilizing it uh, stop immediately and uh, seek further help to uh, how to get around this do not get paint or thinner onto your skin or hands if you get a little bit of paint on your hands and you want it off just uh, use general soap and water until it's removed can take a while do not use the uh, thinners as they've got heavy metals and other um, properties to dry out the skin to doing all sorts of other harmful um, elements uh, they can cause irritation rashes all that sort of thing again you're probably best to see a doctor or something if um, you do react uh, poorly to these uh, substances and absolute which is common sense though avoid the eyes if you get in the eyes, immediate emergency, it's the hospital and all that, rinse out. Do not drink, um, obvious, you'll have to call the poisons hotline and uh, face uh, all of uh, that drama. And uh, kids, kids and children are absolutely stupid, no one likes them. Lock this stuff away, make sure it's in chemical approved containers that are tricky to open and... Uh, all of that stuff even if they're just visiting and going past the uh, work area there's uh, no excuse for uh, someone drinking it or uh, getting hurt and uh, ventilation uh, very important you can get dizzy you can get headachey all that sort of stuff take it outside if you're in a shed or a large open uh, area all doors and windows are open extractor fans and whatnot is um, absolutely uh, awesome for the purpose and no matter where you're doing it inside outside respirator is a must they're very very cheap even um, for hand painting but most importantly uh, airborne unless you're using um, the softer uh, enamels or acrylics uh, this is mostly going for the lacquers the 3m6000 um, respirator uh, with the filters utilizing vapors and uh, gases and that sort of stuff is highly effective it is the cheapest on the market but it's quite comfortable something I utilize and can be uh, found on e Amazon eBay all that for next to nothing did I mention crazy flammable many different chemicals uh, flammable have uh, different uh, properties of uh, maintaining a long burn or just immediately uh, igniting and uh, creating a mass amount of uh, heat and explosion uh, quickly. Uh, thinners, especially uh, kerosenes, are the most uh, flammable and easy to catch uh, substances. It's actually uh, kerosene and oxygen is the most explosive property in the world, more so than TNT and all that. This is the same with your lacquers and um, other bits and pieces. If uh, splashed on a surface, and even dried it catches and in uh, liquid form is uh, quite hazardous 
So keep away from smoking, ignition sources and all of that quite uh, seriously. Um, it is uh, unlike uh, any of the uh, other uh, flammable products out there. The trick is to store your larger containers and only pull out to refill much smaller containers that are used for um, the paint jars, airbrushes and uh, clean up. All you really need is about uh, 50 to 100 mil on hand at any one time and the liters of the stuff can be in a metal container far away from everything else. Now you have three choices to select from in your form of application of paint. Now you are able to use more than one method or all three method as your general style or on each an individual different uh, project. Most only utilize around two. The easiest and first choice for most uh, Gundam modelers to gravitate to is hobby branded rattle cans. The brands they normally go to are Tamiya, though you also have a choice of Testers and Mr. Color. Mr. Color should be noted that some of the official Gundam colors are available, though it is extremely expensive and the three uh, brands can be quite pricey depending on which country and what hobby shop sources them for you. Mind you, automotive or uh, graffiti street art branded lacquer rattle cans work quite well. The trick to uh, utilizing the rattle can is the distance, the sweeping of the spray and how long you shake it. The shaking part could be a lot more important than you would lead to begin to think. Inside the can you will find your paint, the appropriate amount of thinner to get the consistency for atomization in the air through the nozzle and the gas propellant that will be initially stored in liquid form all mixed together with a small metal ball bearing. Now this is all going to separate very quickly as the um, chemical that turns it into a, a gas or air releasing it does not like to be compatible or mix with the paint the painted thinner will also separate. If you spray immediately, you might be spraying more paint, but almost guaranteed more air or pressure, and you'll eventually run out of one before the other, and giving your can a short life and not using the maximum amount of product. This can also make the product coming out inconsistent. To deal with this, a hobby can is half empty, so you don't have to shake it for long, two to three minutes will suffice to get a very good mix of the propellant and the paint. Pull back and spray a good uh, 20 centimeters away from the surface. Start uh, spraying off the model or the surface, sweep across and finish, moving the part around. The coat is gonna be uh, quite thick and there's very control in that uh, manner though you can get a fairly ideal smooth uh, good finish and allow sufficient amount of time for uh, it to dry and uh, harden. Due to the thickness of the uh, application you will have a couple of mil there and you need to allow the uh, propellant to cook out of the paint before drying occurs. Drying and hardening is a very long process and touching it can lead to fingerprints and finish damage. If you are utilizing a non-hobby brand that's on the cheaper side, they're going to fill that can to the brim with propellant and paint with no room for mixing. Mixing is going to take a very long time. If you're shaking it and you hear or feel no, no ball bearing, it's probably because it's buried deep in the pigment of the paint. Keep shaking until it's lodged and loose. Once you're hearing it hit up and down at the top and bottom of the can, that's when the real shaking occurs. A good solid four to five minutes will get the mix absolutely perfect of propellant, thinner and paint. You'll get the thinnest amount of uh, coverage coming out of it. Doing it prematurely out of a budget can will result in a thick paint coming out and leading detail to flood out and causing all sorts of issues. Having a thin finish come out 
will be ideal for most if not uh, all types of uh, modeling and gunpla. When looking at budget or um, hobby brands, uh, hobby wise generally enamels are discontinued. They have a few problems when not mixed quite right, especially with storage, prolonged storage and age. Uh, Games Workshop Citadel and Army Painter do utilize uh, enamel in their cans, so the drying time is even far longer until you can uh, handle it and touch. And uh, incorrect mix will cause bubbles and other problems through the propellant cooking out of the paint. If you can avoid getting those and jumping onto lacquer, that would be most ideal. Last note, this sort of painting is ideal for kits with a lot of colour separation, such as your master grades, perfect grades, that sort of thing. With smaller kits, especially your uh, real grades, you want to probably explore another avenue. Anything that requires a lot of masking, uh, resin, high grades, if you're utilizing tape, um, the paint can come out a bit too thick and cause bleeding. Advantages are always definitely how quick this is to utilize, the lack of skill and the fact that you can shake and go. Disadvantages are how thick it applies, the amount of time it does take to chemically dry, harden and mature, as well as lack of choice in color and control. Please choose wisely. We still have another two options. Option two is the most complicated. It can be the most scary one of them all, though is a lot of fun and the potential uh, pushed through this particular tool can produce some wonderful results with a great amount of ease. It's not very hard. And as we've uh, talked about, is potentially very cheap where you can source uh, through Chinese manufactured uh, compressors and airbrushes, the total cost should not be any more than some master grades if researched and purchased from the right area. Utilizing my series, honing your airbrush skills will teach you the right mixes, inputs, outputs, maintenance tricks, and all of those bits and pieces that I utilize throughout my YouTube channel. The entire point of airbrushing is a tool that atomizes thinned paint, compressed air over a needle to land on a surface as thin or thin and the spray uh, area as small or as large as you want. You have the potential of uh, gradient effects, coloring in something quite thickly or just putting very um, transparent light shades over certain sections. It does have an element of overspray that unwanted paint spreads further than it really needs to go. So masking is required quite often and it's not possible to get different color modulations in a uh, tighter space freehand. If you are looking for a hard edge finish, that is some notes to airbrushing if you're going to jump in immediately or already have access to a rig thin your paint external to the mechanism pour directly into the cup never pull the needle out of the airbrush when paint is in there never tip the needle above uh, 90 degrees always having facing down 45 uh, degrees or minus 45 degrees once loaded with paint this prevents paint going backwards into the inner working mechanism and the air valve before using your airbrush pull it apart be familiar with the parts inside for uh, maintenance lubricate it with petroleum jelly and uh, regulate the airflow be very protective of the needle and the nozzle behind the nozzle can get blocked easily so it needs to be removed for regular cleaning of debris but this is the trick to this uh, version. You can have paint as smooth as uh, butter all over a surface, but your tool is only as good as how well you treat it and use it, which is how well you know how to maintain it, look after it, and the condition it's in. The airbrush that you saw some buy needs to have parts that are easily accessible and bought in the event damage does occur. 
though what you also need to uh, consider is you need to have it completely flushed and clear of any paint when you swap colors and when you store it especially prolonged any dried paint will prevent atomization and paint leaving any leftover wet paint will uh, corrupt or uh, cause troubles if it's two different styles of paints mixing together or if the color is going to change because a previous color is already in there when you start out you'll be spending more time pulling apart cleaning and learning your airbrush than actual painting but the more you practice and the more you paint the faster at the maintenance element you're going to be at and that way you'll have more time for painting creating effects and creating absolutely amazing kits it is important that all of this does look really worrisome straight off the bat really expensive it doesn't have to be and it's not hard at all once you know the process once you have it in your hands and you're playing with it on a weekly or a daily basis you get good at it quick and with the videos that I have uh, access to my channel there's just ample material of where to invest how to get into it and how to get uh, the output and finish that you desire with uh, regimes on uh, practice skilling up cleaning and maintenance we will look after you if you are unsure you want to try airbrushing or not ready to invest in too much gear but want to get a slight sample these 12 volt mini compressors with uh, airbrush setups that are sold online especially uh, from China are absolutely amazing the pump is strong enough to uh, maintain good flow and color in as well as do effects in most applications for this uh, hobby and it takes up absolutely no space whatsoever uh, for the season modeler probably an idea just to use it as a setup or away from home set highly recommended the advantages you can get an amazing amount of soft edge effects with masking hard edge effects can be achieved how much work you put into color separation as well as masking anything can be achieved but it is time consuming and colors can be uh, very easily mixed on the downside it does take a long time to uh, master and work with the paint is airborne thus causing uh, health concerns and need to be done in a ventilated area or uh, outside and uh, the amount of time and effort invested to learn it uh, to have a bit of a setup is um, not exactly an advantage for some especially with those who are quieter impatient and want immediate results it too like the other one requires patience the last one is probably the most time consuming but the most flexible cheapest and easiest in uh, resources and money spent to enter hand painting the uh, usage of a brush in paint and applying it on a surface uh, without uh, any background training or whatnot dipping uh, a brush straight into paint and dragging it over a surface uh, could cause uh, quite a few problems but the most noticeable to many would be the streaks or marks that the uh, brush leaves behind this is mostly due to the paint being far too thick and also a case of uh, utilizing or using the incorrect brush paint brushes can also get very expensive very quick all you really need is something that's quite fine and something that's flat or round and large for coloring in I do have uh, some content on um, the most efficient manner to hand paint with all of that will be in the links down below to color in a surface in the most efficient and best finish uh, manner you have to water down your paint and generally from a hobby consistency that's a liquid form 50 50 is the way to go now this is to the point where the paint is a little too thin to be applied across the surface when uh, dipping in the paint mixing it regularly and uh, applying it across uh, your surface areas masked or uh, not the paint is going to be very very translucent 
and a bit streaky. You're going to see what's occurring uh, underneath it. It would be quite blotchy and uh, truth be told, very, very terrible, but very, very thin. Once dry, and it'll take a while for the thin evaporate, it's uh, going to be absolutely flat and appealing texture-wise. Once dried, you keep applying a coat and allowing it to dry until the layer of pigment builds up to the point where the color is absolutely solid. When we look at the uh, our brothers in the wargaming um, side of things, with the correct usage of uh, thinners, thickeners, retardants and whatnot, you can thin your paint to the point where uh, the color can change into gradients, you can shade, you can weather, you can streak, highlight, dry brush and utilize a whole multitude of effects to give your model more life and definition than just a single colored component. With finer detail, if you can paint very, very neatly and with the finest tip, you're able to trace around raised or recessed details, lines and whatnot. Utilizing paint straight out of the jar when it's a bit thick, you can uh, hold it in shape and place to stay within those confined borders and uh, color it in. Generally, it'll stay wet enough and you can move it around and build it in one or two layers where uh, streaks or bulges or inconsistencies is generally not that much of an issue at all for something that small. Those sort of imperfections are more noticeable on a larger surface. When you are utilizing uh, fine tip brushes, this is where maintenance is very important. Utilizing a conditioner, uh, keeping a point by um, dipping only a quarter of the tip into the paint, cleaning it and storing it correctly. It would be to your advantage to research and Google brush care. And if you are struggling with the cost of uh, very fine brushes, and uh, hobby brand artist brands makeup brushes imported from asia are very cheap they have a very soft bristle and they work very well for our purposes for the finest tip to capture the tiniest detail you will have to go to the modeling stuff the uh, artist stuff though generally if you look after those and use it only when needed they will last a very long time and utilize your cheapest one dollar brushes and uh, go to town on them as your work horses. The more you care for them the longer they last but brushes are a consumable and they do eventually uh, die once uh, worn out. So your advantages are your total costs will be the paints that you are purchasing, uh, the brushes and there's very little to store and you can go straight at it immediately. The disadvantages is a remarkable amount of skill and practice is required, just like the airbrush, just like the rattle can, and also the drying time can be the longest as you're applying things in layers and you require each layer to dry and harden before the next one. Paint types will be talking about uh, chemical hardness, the drying time, and all of that sort of thing. Uh, brushes are consumables, they do eventually die. Uh, with uh, improper care and improper uses, they uh, do not last long whatsoever. However, this is the tool and method. If you do choose rattle can, or if you choose to go down the airbrush route, sometimes when it comes to masking, picking out tiny details or certain elements, it's just so much easier and more efficient to do it uh, by a brush and uh, just picking them um, out freehand opposed to going through an uh, absolute immense amount of trouble. It is definitely worth investing, buying and uh, trying to use. Generally if you were looking at going down the path of Gundam markers this is just the uh, superior alternative and uh, the finish will always come out uh, better once you have proper control measures in place regarding thinner. Added bonus notes, if you spend any time or effort learning how to do three handing, pinstriping, 
all that sort of uh, detail, uh, picture as evidence, anything's possible. This section of the video we're going to talk about types of paint. Now we're going to be utilizing the terminology that's utilized in the hobby and scale modeling more so than what is talked about or identified as in fine arts or industry like uh, paint and painting. The three being acrylics, ones that vehicle or thinner is utilized with isopropic uh, alcohols. The enamels, which utilizes anything from uh, turpentine to white spirits or any other type of oil solvents. And finally, the heavy solvents lacquers. This can be confused with synthetic acrylics and the term lacquer is not the same as uh, lacquerware or uh, lacquer art though lacquer thinner is utilized as the vehicle in this sort of uh, paint. Now first what exactly makes up paint and why are the three different vehicles important and how much of an impact does it make on the actual paint itself? Looking at the chart, the paint has many different uh, components. The pigment is what we visually uh, see, is a very fine ground up powder by all sorts of uh, different materials to achieve that color. Example, uh, titanium is normally white and uh, all sorts of other things make uh, black and other uh, colors. Pigments can be blended before added to all the other uh, chemicals. After that, we have the th vehicle, the thinner. This is what makes it different from uh, paint to paint and how it exactly behaves by what means of application we want to explore. After that, the rest of it is uh, purely uh, additives. Uh, we have a binder, uh, sometimes it's a resin, Sometimes it's something else that hardens and encapsulates the uh, pigment onto the uh, surface. And you might have other bits and pieces such as uh, a retardant, uh, something that keeps everything mixed together, and a few extra uh, bits and pieces to stabilize uh, the mixture of the binder, the vehicle, and the pigment. Sometimes it just has a filler to uh, thicken it up or like starch or it might just have added water to thin it out unless that water is not welcome in the mixture of the binder none of this is that important by the way i also want to have a quick word regarding top coats base coats and compatibility of all different type of paints chemically and what uh, the binder and the pigments will be able to handle i've got a bit of a chart here and uh, there is a general uh, rule of thumb while uh, layering in uh, the hobby. Lacquers first. If you have a base of lacquer, anything can go on top of the lacquer without dissolving it, damaging it, or whatnot when it's in its hardened state. Enamel second. Enamel can sit on top of a lacquer. It can take acrylic on top of it. However, enamel does not like lacquer on top, and it can potentially... Uh, dissolve or have damage occurred especially when it's a top coat. Uh, acrylic water base or alcohol base is the weakest of the lot. It cannot take enamel or lacquer on top and may dissolve. There are however exceptions. Some paints have special binders and are chemically resistant such as the Tamir acrylics and enamels. This is where you've got the quality of the uh, hobby paints coming in that will give you the flexibility once you start utilizing enamel based uh, weathering products, top coat products, all that sort of thing. If you are utilizing Tamiya or uh, Mr. Hobby branded stuff, there is a level that you can put enamel or lacquer on top though it should be dusted on or done in very light coats after it is fully dried and matured. With the isopropic based alcohol paints, the hobby industry would be the Tamir Mini Acrylics 
and the Gunzi uh, Aquarius Acrylics Mini. They both, between the two of them, have a very large uh, paint catalog. Decent adhesion, a little bit weak on the pigment um, density, though they apply pretty well across the board in uh, all levels. You, uh, they are pre-thinned to a certain point, so too much thinner can cause trouble. 50-50 ratio for hand painting, though with airbrushing, not so much, maybe 20 to 30% uh, thinner. They generally are harder to atomize for the airbrush, though they do pretty well for the hand painting side of things. Their colors are mat matches quite well to science fiction, metal effects, military subjects, and uh, tones for the clothing and skin color of uh, miniatures. The advantages of these paints are the fumes. They are not very harsh at all. They can be uh, hand painted indoors and to some certain aspect even uh, airbrushed and atomized. I would uh, trust this in the hand of uh, kids and uh, not get in trouble. Uh, they're not too flammable and they are water soluble so if you have an accident or spill it or whatnot they would be on the easier side to clean up. Now if you want to risk things up a bit you can use lacquer thinner as a vehicle and then it starts behaving more like a uh, lacquer paint but not as uh, stable. Or well, pretty damn good product. Just a quick spotlight, Mr Hobby did release their uh, water-based accretion. This is a tad different to any of the uh, polyurethane based paints and behaves quite uh, in a strange manner. I do not recommend uh, thinning with uh, water though they do have their own um, brand of vehicle. What I find interesting in this pre-thinned state is via hand painting straight out of the jar you can um, stretch it across the surface and it generally self levels and flattens itself then dries to the touch in a very quick amount of time. This is probably a very good introduction paint for your first uh, couple of kits, especially to someone who's quite young and uh, impatient or is just doing touch-ups on your uh, snapped kits. Generally, I think this is the perfect product for those with the mentality of the best results with the least amount of uh, effort and uh, the quickest uh, time frame in applying paint and showing something off if your goal is to color in something or just to pick out small fine uh, details. This is the thing that I would jump from a Gundam marker to painting if you're doing very small steps. Type 2 would be enamels. Hobby enamels were the hobby industry standard in the past uh, from the inception of uh, the first kits available throughout the 80s throughout the 90s and a good portion of the 2000s. Uh, the leader of them were uh, Humbrel who were aligned with the legendary company Airfix nowadays as well as a huge host of uh, other brands from uh, Tamiya all the way to uh, Ravel doesn't matter uh, where you reside in the world there is a fairly accessible uh, form of enamel hobby paint at your disposal you do generally get around the same to a little more and they would be probably the cheaper of any of the other ranges these paints do have quite a bit of bite and back in the day were applied straight onto the surface of uh, plastic though nowadays a primer is always definitely highly recommended. They have a very good uh, self-leveling capacity due to the slow drying time and the colour catalogues are quite uh, versatile in all sorts of interesting effects, uh, metals and all your standard uh, military colours with a few bright ones that you could whip up for a science fiction stance. Where their advantages uh, rise are, 
Due to their tiny quantities, the fumes are not that bad and they can uh, be used in a limited indoor uh, setting, though generally uh, garages and open window areas are the very best and it cleans up on the brush with uh, mineral turpentine or white spirits for thinning. The trick to these paints are they separate very, very quickly in prolonged storage and if you allow them to store for far too long uh, they do have a shorter shelf life especially exposed to uh, air though you can definitely get a few good years out of them by giving them a sufficient mix but with all paints I always uh, recommend a uh, pure stainless steel uh, ball bearing to shake around inside followed by a uh, good mix these are specially designed for hand painting and uh, once sufficiently thinned, applied, and these hobby brand ones are the fastest to uh, skin. That is uh, the surface uh, forming a physical barrier uh, to dry to a putty state, but the longest process is the hardening state. It could look pretty hard, and you potentially can handle some areas after a few hours after drying, but you want to give it a few good days until it fully matures and hardens. The longer the time takes, the more harder it gets. You'll find once you picked up a painted surface that's many years old, that's hardened for so long and so hard, stripping that paint could be quite uh, difficult actually and it would be at its absolute maximum strength. For uh, the solid um, chemical uh, maturation is a week, though you could definitely handle it after uh, a day two days max to be safe if you've uh, applied it in a suitable manner. If it's overly, utterly thick and poorly mixed, then yeah, more time is definitely required. Due to this case, when applied by brush, even using the same uh, method as mentioned in this video, multiple layers, this paint type will give you uh, the flattest and the most satisfying finish uh, out of uh, the hobby family of paints. We spoke about the issues in a rattle can. Uh, this would be the last type of paint I would use, though if you want to be very careful, the longer you shake, uh, the quicker it will gas or uh, cook out the propellants. Generally, the advantages of this paint, perfect for uh, hand painting, ideal for beginners, and it's pretty fun to play with very vibrant paint once it's fully dried and hardened it's one of the hardest paints that's uh, not prone to chipping scratching any sort of damage especially on an articulated uh, model acrylics generally be on the uh, weaker side of that spectrum the disadvantages are it it's drying time uh, purely and probably the last one it has no advantages to airbrush with whatsoever Airbrush is okay, but no benefits. And last, we have the very best, but more troublesome paint, lacquer. These are the recommended and standard for the uh, Gundam hobby. Uh, Mr. Uh, hobby or Mr. Color being the standard. They are best applied out of a rattle can or airbrush. Once thinned down with standard uh, lacquer thinner, which you can buy from automotive stores or hardware stores, it uh, atomizes quite smoothly and is uh, flexible about how little or how much thinner you have without uh, the paint breaking down on the surface or the airbrush uh, clogging due to its fast drying nature. It dries very quickly and in climates that reacts to heat, uh, such as uh, summer, high heat, uh, humidity, it is a bit of a trouble to use. All other climates, not too much of a problem. As mentioned and advised a few times, its biggest disadvantage is the negative environmental and health impact when airborne. Uh, it is uh, the more dangerous of the paints. On the bright side, with how well it atomizes in an airbrush and applies to a surface, dries very quickly. It is the perfect paint if you're going down the direction of uh, masking and it also uh, adheres to uh, surface ideally as lacquers are generally always uh, primers. 
it eats or bites into the plastic without uh, damaging it and it generally stays there. Because it dries very quickly, we can apply masks on it within a number of hours to 24 hours. We can also uh, treat or deal with the surface such as uh, polishing, sanding, as well as uh, weathering in the fastest time frame possible. The shelf life of these paints are absolutely crazy. They can dry out, and drying out is not a problem if you leave a cap off. Lacquer thinner will reconstitute them and turn them back into a liquid state of uh, binder and uh, pigment. After that, it might dry out even uh, quicker and will require retardant. Uh, where this is a bad thing, if you have a uh, painted surface and any sort of the slightest amount of vapor or droplet of uh, lacquer paint goes on it or lacquer thin air goes on it, it's going to reconstitute back into paint and may cause uh, damage. It would be an idea to use an enamel or an acrylic as a uh, top coat as it would be a little more um, resistant to that occurring. Lacquers also have the most uh, appealing and convincing metallic effects. Here is an example of uh, Alclad 2 and a couple of other brands painted on spoons. They are bright up quite nicely from a gloss black undercoat. If you are after the quickest possible result in colouring in a surface with paint via airbrush, SMS Premium Lacquers and some other brands do have pre big sets where you can pour straight into the brush and apply on the surface followed up by a very quick cleanup. Lacquers where they do suffer are not the best at hand painting due to its uh, quick drying time and some of these being uh, pre-mixed. If you're using some of the thicker stuff like Mr. Color and uh, Guy Note, mixing it with some straight uh, retardant or a heavy dose of thinner with retardant can have it liquid enough to pick up fine details and uh, dries. Though if you're hand painting with uh, metallics, they dry brush beautifully. Now, I always stand by the fact that you do not have to buy any hobby branded thinner and that a cheaper alternative can always be found. This also goes for the uh, critically acclaimed Mr. Leveling Thinner by Mr. Hobby or Gunzi. What is the selling point of this case is is it's the slowest drying of the thinners or vehicles when applied to uh, lacquers. It's good enough to hand paint, it's good enough to weather, it's definitely good enough to airbrush. I find that there are uh, industry alternatives, any sort of premium lacquer thinner or lacquer thinner with retardant mixed in, specially targeted for gloss top coats, gloss painting or automotive uh, applications are a very similar mix. You can mix your own with an industrial amount of lacquer thinner and artistic acrylic retardant mixed to taste in very small quantities of a couple of hundred milliliters. Have a play around. Uh, once you get a good handle of uh, artistic acrylic uh, retardant, you can have the paint dry practically Im immediately or you can have it drying all day if you like. Uh, if you're exploring artistic catalogue, going back to enamel, you can find uh, properties and mediums that speed up the drying process of uh, fluids. It is a complete different topic that's worth researching and exploring that is not touched by our scale modelers whatsoever. But especially for warmer climates or just for general everyday use, adding retardants, using leveling thinner, making your own leveling thinner or utilizing an automotive top coat uh, product will uh, give you more control, more time and a better result. Advantages, very easy to airbrush, very quick to dry, uh, fairly strong after drying. It is the best paint for adhering to a surface as well as it's resistant to everything else, best metallics, and has the ability to mask and buff polish efficiently. 
disadvantages there's a little more involved to hand paint it though having another range of paint sitting on top of it is not an issue whatsoever you may need to mix your own thinner for uh, retardant purposes but you could do that to the um, other brands though the health uh, is quite a negative impact uh, respirator as well as uh, other uh, measures are needed and uh, painting away from living quarters or other individuals it is important to note highly flammable store appropriately and the most uh, inappropriate paint for kids minors and should be kept in the house or uh, accessible if there is uh, kids or minors around the next topic we're going to be talking about is work order the process of the build how painting is applied in the overall greater picture and if it is better to build it to the finishing point than to paint it or to paint it in pieces and where the building or elements of it occur a Gundam model has points of articulation points of assembly overlapping detail and molded in multiple colors as well as further colors that the plastic injection may not have gotten around to so what most traditional modeling is familiar with is you may paint a bit assemble then paint the rest though what you're able to do with a Gundam kit is assemble it and pull it apart again but with uh, great difficulty there is a few tips we're going to get into though unless it's almost a monotone color or we're dealing with something like resin or a model from the uh, 80s 90s where points of articulation overlaps covering polycaps we can disassemble the kit there's no advantage of uh, painting it as is like we would not paint on the runners still now luckily with a lot of kits such as figures tanks aircrafts you've got a bottom bit a base that touches the ground and you can paint the item flip it whatnot individual parts of a Gundam kit is not that easy especially if you want to pick it up hold it change its rotation as we work on it touching it will leave fingerprints what we have here is a bamboo skewer on an electrical alligator kit clip you can make them made up by HIQ parts or U-Star all in metal very cheap on eBay and Amazon pre-made for you or make them yourself importing them means that you're sourcing the cheapest uh, materials and bringing them straight to you though they can get overpriced when um, a hobby label or uh, being sold out of a hobby shop sourcing the material yourself and assembling them is also highly appropriate they can be put in corrugated cardboard or foam here is a picture of a bunch of individual parts mounted on clips onto a block of foam in a box this is uh, very common and what most modelers do are uh, sourced from another blog I like to put them in smaller clusters on smaller platforms separated by color or what I'm exactly going to do though a large block also makes it so you can store and categorize your larger individual projects notice that the outer detail or the outer surface of the kit is facing up that's the only half you have to paint and on the underside is where it assembles and you don't necessarily see there is a series of uh, pegs holes for the pegs to connect and other support structs as well as points of articulation like uh, poly caps and uh, pegs for the poly cap articulation joints to hold onto that way you're not damaging the surface you're not going to have a bit where there's no paint on it because the peg is uh, touching it and it makes us sorting out and focusing on individual parts a lot uh, more pleasant than being overwhelmed by the larger greater project even though this is ideal and mostly done by people that rattle can and mostly uh, airbrush and even though if hand painting you can paint half a part let it dry then paint the other half utilizing this method for hand painting is also uh, much accepted and works out very very well once you're done painting 
detailing, weathering, deckling, you're as far as possible where each piece on each peg is finished. Everything snaps back together and this is where we call a finished model opposed to what we traditionally know as build glue, have it done, then paint it and finish it. It is also quite possible to assemble, look at it, do final uh, touch-ups and then call it finished then. Though that is uh, up to whoever's working on it and uh, their style for uh, their ultimate uh, finish in uh, weathering or lighting and shadowing or any sort of uh, outcome that's possible. This next section will focus mostly on preparation of the kit, including during the build stage to have your model ready to receive paint and also not to be damaged or for the paint or chemicals to have negative effects on the model. Removing nubs and imperfections. When you're greeted with a new model kit, you're given a uh, runner and it's uh, connected from the gate of the sprue. The sprue being the pouring part that fills the runner. When you cut it off, you're going to have a slight rage bit as it's pinched off rather than uh, sheared or cleaned off. This needs to be removed by a knife and period of sanding. There is a popular trend of using single sided or very fine specialty nippers to speed up the modeling process. This is a false sense of security as it does do a clean flush cut that does not discolor the point of the nub. When paint is applied, you will see a raised uh, surface and the illusion will be ruined. So generally, regardless what tool you use, the nub needs to be removed as well as flash and other parts. Parts that join together can be a little more complicated than at face value from basic tutorials such as color separation and seam line filling. We can see with uh, this very basic single color part, there would be no advantage to leaving it as it is and that gluing the two surfaces together to make it one and filling that seam means we only have one part to paint. Where the thumb and finger is uh, pinching, that's where you can add the uh, clip. We're going to talk about masking the rest of the peg and that is good and fine and ready for painting once you've explored how to utilize plastic cement and the seam line filling process, unless you've done so already. This is when decisions get a bit more difficult and we've got a colored part inside of another colored part. This leg has a seam that's running down the back and the front that uh, amasses uh, frontage exposure as well as multiple centimeters of a full seam. On the inside behind the knee guard, we've got a uh, dark gray part. We've got the options of uh, painting it and dealing with the seam or if we were to glue the white components together, fill that seam and paint the whole component, normally you attach the peg at the uh, bottom um, peg. The inside blue bit can either be masked and painted or the most easiest way around it, you hand paint that small component as it would be seen from the side and back and not very noticeable. Components can become far more complicated than that and looking at this piece you can see that uh, there is a lot of lines going around a lot of panel lines and where the seam is is barely visible from the greater scheme of things yes with the blue bits you could glue them together or you can have them separatable so you can access the inner workings as well as the white thrusters leaving this to be separatable even though the three parts are painted blue is perfectly fine you're going to come across many different situations where there are many different type of kits. I cannot show every single example you're going to come across, though you'll have to reach an example of, is the seam or imperfection too ugly? Do I have to mask? Is it worth masking? Worth keeping the seam? Worth filling the seam? And as the more kits you do, the more experienced you'll come in making these decisions. There are various methods and styles of recutting and separating parts and filling it, disguising seam lines, 
and a few tips and tricks that people share around and slowly you'll learn them you'll find them for yourself though it's the different colored parts that are captured in between other parts will always be a challenge though generally the more expensive the bigger the kit the higher the grade the larger the part breakdown the easier it generally is for the painting side of things where the building side of things people who don't color kits they see that as the higher challenge and you can see how a different form of thinking while building and enjoying the hobby uh, really enhances and uh, expands the uh, entire process for yourself. There is no one universal approach around it and there's really no wrong answers unless the finishing result looks quite uh, bad but then at that stage it's a learning curve and the enhancement of uh, your study of the hobby which uh, in the end will come to uh, teaching you this lesson and uh, enhancing the experience. Overall, a positive conclusion. Now, one of the biggest problems, which is also the biggest feature in Gunpla, is the peg and socket concept of uh, attaching and pulling apart. Gundam models have been designed as a toy that's pre-colored, that comes together, the playing part is the assembly, and you're able to play with it after it's built for children, teens, all that sort of thing. The scale modeler side of things is a second thought, but it's assuming that we have the skills and whatnot to overcome uh, getting around that. Now, the plastic that makes these kits a high impact polystyrene. We've got this tiny peg that is normally solid. Uh, the one in the picture is a hollow one. A lot of pressure and force goes on them, though once we start uh, introducing chemicals, thinners, washers, all that sort of stuff, it softens it, it gives it stress, and eventually they break, and that causes a lot of post uh, issues and a lot of uh, panic if they break or uh, anxiety during the build process. This is not really a huge deal and is just time and effort and know-how can overcome it without any issue. When a peg goes into a hole, it's designed to do that dry. Though, when you're pulling it apart, you risk damage separating it by gorging the plastic, even with the most gentle plastic separators, and that puts unnecessary stress on those little pegs. You can widen the hole by using a pin vise drill that is slightly bigger than the socket hole, or if you put your hobby knife in and uh, create a wedge shape by drilling it, it's wider at the mouth, narrow at the very end. The peg will fit in loose. It can snap together, but comes apart by a gentle pull. This makes the situation of pulling apart and putting it together really, really easy. And there's no pressure or stress on the pegs whatsoever. Whatever chemicals you utilize, should uh, not pose to be an issue whatsoever. If you've loosened it too much and the part will not stay together, you can uh, thicken the peg or the hole with uh, a little bit of uh, super glue or other glue. Post uh, painting, you're able to uh, use wood glue, gorilla glue, uh, white glue to fill in those peg holes, tiny bit down the seam, slap them together, and the joint is going to be very, very strong. Now, while you are painting, painting can uh, make a huge influence on assembling and pulling apart. You can see in this picture where the fingers are inside uh, the inner bit, where you've got the point the polycap goes in, the pegs, the holes. Inside that, you don't want to have a uh, lick of paint at all. It's just the outer surface bit. You're painting in uh, one direction. Though, as paint gets around, especially when you're spraying, not just hand painting, and priming all of it is ideal, where you have the peg, where you have the holes, the points that the polycaps go into and the polycaps themselves, you want to mask. Now, masking it with tape would be a huge issue or take a long time. Using poster tack, blue tack, uh, any sort of putty or clay-like substance that doesn't dry or harden, you wrap up those little areas with that and uh, they just peel off immediately only showing uh, the polycaps or pegs 
and uh, any frontage detail that is seen visually by the viewer you can't see it at all now most of the time these pegs including the ones you go into polycaps and the polycaps themselves will be the points or anchors that you're going to be putting the alligator clips into put the clip in first then mask around with the blue tack now going back to breakage and thickening of ball joints ball joint port parts such as in this picture you can see it is a, a hip bit this is where most breakages occur the two ball joints that go through are notorious for snapping on some models as well as the peg facing up as per the picture breaking off you can preemptively strike this by drilling a 1.5 mil hole down the two ball joints and that peg and replacing the insides with a uh, brass rod of the same size maybe a lick of super glue inside maybe it's so snug it just slides in and stays in place the strength is going to be off the metal and not the plastic it will be near indestructible if it's thickened if it's uh, chemically uh, weakened in any state it's going to stay absolutely solid at any state if there is any breakage before painting or after painting this is not a big deal as you can still drill at a later date and replace the inside with the rod once you have done painting and everything is ideal you assemble and anything that never has to come apart again you can uh, put the clear glue as uh, explained it will stay nice and thick you may want to retouch uh, the finish be it a gloss coat or a matte coat though if you don't need enough there shouldn't be any scarring or uh, issues anything else it should uh, pop together once the blue tack masks are removed which does occur very very quickly the blue tack is absolutely reusable when building we are aware that there are some parts that are separatable being the shoulders to the torso the torso to the hips the legs to the groin consider that all other joints from the wrist through to uh, the arms elbows whatnot of your inner frames find a dynamic pose that works with all the armor on strip it down to the individual limb pieces remove the armor and glue or super glue into place when doing something such as a competition a display piece or something that's permanently set up as such it is so much easier to recreate that pose and there's a lot less that can go on in the damage of uh, pegs articulation and scratching a paint in this next section we will be talking about priming at this stage your kit should be built pulled apart separated in color classes once it's all uh, primed in in the one color very hard to distinguish and uh, tell what you were originally going to be painted your uh, points of articulation polycaps as well as pegs are masked uh, this picture is an excellent example of what's going on post primer application the reason why we prime in a nutshell it is uh, more explored and expanded upon in other videos again there will be uh, some more sources down in the description section below is to create adhesion between the top coat of paint or the base coat and the plastic plastic is non-porous very very smooth and the paints gonna sit on it that gives the maximum amount of chances to uh, scratch off chip off or damage especially if it's a paint that doesn't have as much gripping potential or probabilities as lacquer lacquer has a tendency of melting and slightly biting or anchoring itself into the plastic by only uh, bothering the very top surface the primer lays on quite uh, flat though has a texture on top that you can't quite see that is excellent for paint to grip onto the surface aspect people like to talk about is giving a universal straight color to study the pieces there's a few advantages we can get from that one Gundam kits come in multiple colors when you put down paint which is fairly transparent and whatever colors underneath bleed through through the bouncing of light if you have a black piece and a white piece and you spray down a universal color 
some parts are going to appear darker than other others. The primer, as well as the base coat, will guarantee that there will be a tone and shade consistency among all parts, no matter what the previous colour was, due to the pigment density. The colour is also quite matte and very light in nature, which gives you the opportunity to look for any imperfections, faults, mistakes or damage that's occurred to the surface and how you will react to it depending on the finish you wish to achieve. If there is a forgotten nub, a flash mark or some sort of a gorging hole or scratch, this is the opportunity to apply some sort of a filler or putty, sand back and reprime that exact part ready for painting. If you wish to achieve different finishes such as gloss, you can apply some surface preparation to uh, bring out what you're after at the very end. Uh, finishes will be uh, covered later on. So priming is a little more than just the adhesion of uh, gluing paint onto a surface. There is a multitude amount of um, advantages as well as micro filling with paints that have numbers. You'll notice this range of lacquer primers by Mr. Hobby have a number ranging between 1500 to 500. This property is known as microfilling and is a uh, bulk pigment or additive to the paint that uh, has the ability to fill fine scratches or very micro amounts of imperfections from working with tools such as files, sandpapers and whatnot. However, it will not deal with deeper scratches or intentional or accidental mistakes. However, applying the thicker of these products directly by a brush uh, can have enough of an impact to be sanded back with a flat finish. Using the thicker ones is ideal in this format. How the scaling works is the smaller the number, the more thick and dense it is. 500 is the smallest you'll come across and in the language used by the art industry and especially the automotive or surface painting industry is a liquid putty or a spray putty. You're spraying the thinnest possible putty that's um, atomized and that will fill almost everything. Once we start getting to the 1200-1000 range, it's general duty. All it will fix is uh, sandpaper scuffing marks, scratching marks, that sort of thing, as well as uh, just uh, surface debris. The very uh, highest end, 1500, is pretty much akin to just a lacquer grey and only for spotting imperfections or if the kit is practically uh, very, very detailed and you don't want to flood the detail or already okay. Application of primer is generally done by rattle can. That's the most uh, popular format as it's easily shaken and sprayed on. Not much effort required. The Japanese import stuff can be a bit on the expensive side though you can look towards uh, automotive or plastic primer in hardware stores or automotive stores. For your micro filler or your heaviest 500, have a look for anything that's spray putty or liquid putty. And for a general primer surfacer, 1000 to 1200 is just surface primer or etch primer. Etch primer means it bites into metal. So if you're painting um, anything that has uh, metal or etch or whatnot, it's something you want to look into, especially the wargaming crowd. Any general grey paint would be your 1500 and works well. If we go back in time a bit and see what was the industry standard or uh, popular among modelers during the 80s and the 90s, priming was generally done in enamels, hand painted. So eventually rattle cans were uh, utilised to do a black base. To this day this tradition is carried among wargamers as uh, they haven't quite jumped on the concept of uh, etch priming, uh, especially for their pewter miniatures. Uh, brands that do carry the polyurethane paints with which we have talked about do have rattle can alternatives as a surfacer or a primer. 
Generally, all they are are uh, enamel paint in a can with no micro filler. As these miniatures are so fine, you will flood out the detail. Do consider this for very fine models when you're selecting the correct primer. As all you're paying that large price sum for a specially decorated can of uh, black enamel paint, uh, most of the time uh, imported and advertised quite heavily, there's not a lot of value for money there and uh, generally uh, they are to be uh, avoided unless you're going to substitute for a cheaper alternative and if you're doing that and uh, putting up with the fumes and smells a grey or black lacquer paint would be a far more better choice brands that utilize enamel as a primer include Citadel, Army Painter and anything else that's uh, wargaming focused. The same rules also apply with canned or bottled primer. You can thin them down quite substantially and follow the hand painting recommendations of this uh, video. Primer can definitely be hand painted. It will stretch out the amount of time so hand painters also prefer to use rattle cans uh, when priming. Though generally the biggest use would be for uh, airbrushing. Now the biggest hassle that people avoid airbrushing primers are that uh, due to the micro filler they have a tendency of clogging, slowing down and coming across uh, technical problems with your airbrush especially if it's not very clean or if you're not very uh, experienced or skilled. Uh, with a bit of practice and the right know-how these are fairly easy to apply as well and far cheaper than the rattle can alternatives. My personal quick rundown uh, suggestion would be a healthy mix of 50-50, maybe just a touch more uh, lacquer thinner with a healthy dose of uh, retardant or pre-retardant mix thinner into the primer. Give it a thorough good mix by adding ball bearings or mixing the jar first, mixing it in another container Doing large batches that are pre-mixed makes life a lot easier. Then add it to the airbrush after it's uh, sufficiently cleaned. Remove the end of the nozzle and sometimes you'll find lint and debris which will clog and filter your primer, especially if there's a microfiller built in. Consider when using your airbrush, swap the standard 0.3 millimeter nozzle which is built into most airbrushes for a 0.5 millimeter nozzle. That would have far more uh, control and superior flow. This is definitely 100% the case when you're going for the more spray uh, putty or the Mr. Surfacer 500. Uh, some people buy a cheaper Chinese uh, airbrush, have uh, the larger diameter nozzle and just keep that for priming as well as top coats. The next section we're going to talk about is masking. This is the application of a color, putting something over the paint that you do not want to change the color, applying another color and removing to have a multicolored piece, be it for effect, strategy or raised detail. The example of the picture here is multiple examples of masking with the assistance of color separation, where you're able to paint a color piece and then put it back together. You mask because you cannot separate the component or to create a graphic. This picture is an example of raised detail. The detail on the low end is uh, being masked. It was uh, painted a dark color. The masking tape was applied and around the edges of the raised detail you're able to use a very sharp knife and remove the excess tape. Uh, this is a very common uh, method especially for uh, something like this, use multiple small strips instead of one big strip covering everything that may have uh, wrinkles or uh, gaps or any sort of method for paint to flow underneath. Uh, there are multiple methods of uh, painting as well as the different type of paints we've talked about but there are some paints that are easy and far more superior to mask with where others may cause trouble and this all goes down to drying time as well as adhesion with the surface. You could imagine mask could lift that paint up or create damage. 
there are a few tricks that you can abide by. Uh, the first one is allow the maximum amount of time for the paints to dry and cure and then some before applying the mask on. This will allow the best chemical chance of that your, your paint is not going to react to the mask and the bond will be at its strongest so when you lift you're not lifting the paint with it. The second tip is put a clear coat over the paint and allow that the maximum amount of time to dry. If any damage does occur it will be on the clear coat and not the paint. A further clear coat can be applied and you're able to buff or repair the finish. This will be uh, covered a little bit later. Again, apply your mask in very small uh, strips. You can cut the mask while it's on the model if it's going into a panel line at an edge or on the inner edge. You want to mask the lower ends, not so much the higher ends, unless there's that much of a gap that you can also cover the sides. Once you're applying the paint, if by airbrush, lower the PSI, go as thin as you can and dust on as if the paint is drying just as it hits the surface and don't uh, flood or apply far too much paint. This is also the go with uh, rattle can. Pull back a bit and go in dust coats. Just cover it enough that the surface is not wet. Allow it to dry before you put a few more coats. If the paint is too thick, there will be a step between the lower level and the higher level of paint. When very wet, it has a tendency of sometimes seeping underneath the masking tape. Also consider, once the mask is down, maybe put a clear coat, really thin one, before you put your main coat. If there's any leaking or seepage, it's going to be clear paint, and that can be repaired later on. Don't go too thick, as there will be a step difference, unless you want that. And then the next step, you definitely don't. You can also shape, sculpt, or cut your mask off the sheet, something like a cutting mat, and then apply on your surface to create all sorts of uh, different effects, tricks, detail, or imagery. This is an example of uh, digital camouflage. You can also do a soft edge military style camouflage, as well as uh, pinstripes, stripes, and other interesting effects. Uh, some masking, uh, the Izu brand, does an amazing very thin pinstripe uh, range that is around under a mil to a little over a millimeter thick. Now, not any masking tape is exactly going to work. Uh, some of the stuff such as painter's tape, blue tape, things that you find in a hardware store is a bit too strong, has an increased risk of uh, lifting. Some of the cheaper stuff over time ages and the glue gets a bit funny, could leave a residue and other issues behind. Tamir tape, as well as some of the other yellow hobby tape are low stick. And uh, generally for their cost and the amount of tape and use you get out of it, generally your best uh, value with uh, updating sizes from doing uh, small little areas and as well as covering larger surfaces. You do not have to cover the whole surface in tape as you can use something like foil or paper around a larger area and tape the edges with masking tape. Tape can be a bit troublesome due to lack of stretch around curved surfaces, barrels, the very tip of uh, missiles and whatnot in the aircraft sphere. Curved tape is also quite good for uh, pinstriping these areas and is also a product that's uh, considered looking at. They're generally on the thicker side so they are also ideal as a panel line scribing product. Dual uses. Moving away from tape we also have uh, masking fluid or liquid mask. Various amounts of uh, brown, brands as well as other types outside of the hobby. It's practically a quick drying latex that applies onto a surface. You paint in an area or you can paint in random blobs or shapes such as uh, camouflage or cut out areas. You can also put a mass amount, let it dry, cut and then peel off the excess if uh, desired. Make sure you uh, pile it on nice and thick for easy removal. It uh, can be difficult to use, make sure it's well mixed, has a very short shelf life so utilize it before it completely dries in the bottle and uh, scuff it up and uh, peel back with uh, tape 
or blue tack or by rubbing the surface after you paint it on top. Allow it to dry before applying paint. Blue tack, uh, also referred to during the area where we'll talk about articulation, pegs, polycaps, all that sort of thing, is an amazing mask and it does a soft edge so you could cover in areas or a mass large area and it also does all sorts of shapes such as uh, camouflage and patterns and all that sort of stuff not very good for a clean uh, finish of uh, objects or something that is probably more preferred from tape it does build on uh, nice and thick you spray you peel it off immediately no problem it is reusable for a certain amount of times until enough of the solvents uh, dries it out a bit and it will not stick or move as well. Uh, definitely highly recommended to the point where I think it's practically mandatory to uh, have in your kit. For those who have never used it, it has a sculpting ability, a sticking ability, and you normally use uh, small dots to stick up a poster or some paper uh, on the wall so it's also known as a poster tack here's a bit of a uh, crazy sculptural artwork that uh, someone's done of a spider so it can uh, hold weight and shape and all sorts of uh, silly things leaning against the surface adding paint and peeling is not an issue at all stencils sometimes made out of uh, very thin plastic most of the time a bendable thin metal you can get all sorts of shapes or laser cutter imagery, logos, whatnot. Practically just lettering and numbering. Uh, a few logos and symbols, uh, mostly around the World War II era for aircraft and uh, tanks. There is some stuff in the catalogue for uh, Gundam or uh, generic objects like skulls. It is very useful. Put it on a surface, tape it down with uh, Tamiya tape or some other masking format spray then remove and you get that uh, image in the color that you spray on the surface that you applied on uh, very easy there is also uh, masking tape stencils that are single use that's uh, sold online you can also utilize a, a cutting mechanism as well as uh, laser and CNC machines to make your own Getting back to laser cutted uh, masking tape or sheets, you can purchase large sheets with patterns such as digital camouflage, hexagons or normal camouflage and stick it on your model. They are from companies such as uh, Plamo Mask, you can see them around eBay and I can imagine when more people get CNC machines and lasers, uh, they'll just uh, hit the market like uh, absolute crazy. It's uh, definitely uh, something very worthwhile looking out for as the effects are just mind blowing. Next we're going to talk about uh, finishes and top coat. Uh, the term top coat is a clear paint that is applied over your kit or a certain layer to achieve a particular job. There may be several top coats that are occurring at different levels such as uh, changing a surface from a matte to a gloss to achieve the application of a water slide decal or weathering effects. A matte also accepts and attracts different weathering effects. You're going to be hearing these terminologies a lot from this point onwards in the video. Every time you buy a paint, it's going to have a different finish, be it a glo or gloss or matte. Most paints will appear matte, we will talk about that later. Gloss is the effect that if you have wet slick surface there's water on it a glass sheen anything that's really shiny and reflects white intensely to the point where you get these little um, spots of uh, very sharp white glare gloss has its advantages in the build process and is uh, shiny and slick enough that the surface is absolutely polished and you can slide things like water slide decals and utilize uh, effects such as panel lining where a panel fluid of uh, paint normally very very runny paint goes down a trench to create an a shadow effect before you finish a model you may have to revert a finish from matte to gloss to whatever you desire at the end the properties of a clear gloss is practically a paint with zero pigment the vehicle 
and some sort of binder or resin to create that body of uh, the clear look. And that's just generally the gist of it. The thicker the layer of that gloss with no imperfections, no roughness of the surface, polished and smooth, the sharper, the uh, deeper, the um, more sheen and light it will reflect beautifully. And the sheen on it should uh, resemble a very, very sharp, perfect reflection of the light source hitting it. If it's not quite perfect, you are able to polish it up to make sure the outer surface is ideal. But to achieve that look, much like a water surface or a showroom car, you have to do quite a bit of surface preparation from the bare plastic and primer, making sure any dust that landed on your model, any imperfection, bump or whatnot, is sanded and polished off. To polish underneath the paint, all you really need is uh, sandpaper from about 1000 grit, 2000 grit, going all the way up to about 3, 4, 5, 7000 grit. Apply wet, if it's on a painted surface, you go very gently to remove any bumps or lumps, but you do not go through the paint. Be careful of raised details and corners, as that much pressure will remove the paint on that very sharp corner. We don't definitely do not want that to occur. To make sure you're not removing too much paint, apply a clear gloss and then polish and cut that away with the sandpaper. The aid of a compound polish will also help by applying polish on a surface and using a series of uh, cotton rags or um, an applier will smooth the surface which has uh, a slight amount of grit into the cream of the uh, polish move it around to cut up and smooth out the surface that is the clear resin uh, binder and then you remove it with another cloth or wash it off it's uh, pretty much that simple there are hobby grade polishes there are also other polishes which may or may not be suitable for your paint finish and uh, type of uh, top coat used be mindful that these clear paints also have vehicles or thinners just like any other paint, acrylic, enamel, lacquer and polyurethane. Polyurethane cannot be buffed, sand, polished whatsoever. What you get is what you get. The other properties, how quickly it dries may frost up the effect or sit on the model strangely. You want it to dry as slowly as possible. Where the acrylic and enamel has an advantage there. The enamel, however, after a few days, can be a risk in polishing. The acrylic is normally the best, though if you control your lacquers, which has the deeper sheen, and slow down the drying time with enough thinner and retardant, can perform quite well. The flat finish, also known as matte, uh, spelt with an M A T E. This is the complete opposite to the gloss, where there is any void of shine or light reflecting. If anything, it absolutely absorbs light until it's just a dead flat look, as per the name given. Most objects you'll come across, as well as paints, will be flat. The general cause of this is either the resin binder on top has a very very rough jagged surface that's uh, so rough and messed up light cannot pass through it to reflect but it's still clear enough that you can see through and the color underneath other flats may utilize a clear pigment that sits on top of the binder and sometimes if built up too thick can start to give a frosty or white look flat does not really have an advantage in what type of vehicle that's behind it though generally i found uh, the lacquers are easier to use as well as the enamels where the acrylics have a tendency of uh, fogging up for uh, some reason you will find most paints that you purchase will come already flat but because the surface is already quite bumpy when you wish to do some sort of filtering panel lining inking decal work you'll need to uh, turn it into a gloss finish, seal whatever work you're doing in gloss, and then reapply a clear matte to return it back to your uh, dull effect, or slightly dull with a little bit of a sheen. 
There is surface preparation you can do, opposed to what you do with gloss where you have a polished and smoother surface possible. On a large plane you're able to rough it up with uh, dry or wet sandpaper. Starting around uh, the three to four hundred grits, rough up the surface where with paint on it, it still looks quite smooth, but it will have no chance of reflecting light at the base. So the final uh, clear coat on top will also not do the, the same. If you happen to have a paint in a jar that is uh, gloss and you wish to turn it into a matte, in the Tamiya Mr. Hobby ranges, you can buy a bottle of um, acrylic, enamel or lacquer. The acrylic will actually work in any of them regardless, flat base. It is a solid jar of pure flat or matte pigment, a tiny uh, amount on it uh, at the uh, end of a uh, paddle pop stick or uh, a knife edge mixed into the paint will flatten it uh, considerably that's what that product that you may notice that's not selling at the bottom of your hobby shop uh, paint rack and on discount is uh, no thinning down and applying it on your model will make it work to uh, dull your kit you'll uh, just sort of frost it up immediately with far too much clear or white pigment so it's a paint tips for applying it it is best done um, all finishes especially uh, gloss rattle can or airbrush with flat, airbrush is potentially the best way to do it unless you thin it down to the point and apply it by brush where a few coats is required. Spray as thin as possible to the point where uh, the finish is practically drying just as it hits or slightly after uh, the surface. Allow it to uh, mature and do it in coats to slowly cull away at the gloss sheen. Uh, with the surface preparation of the sanding and whatnot um, noticed, you can also uh, polish the uh, gloss with uh, one two thousand grit sandpaper and not go up the grits. That can also uh, help get it to a dead flat finish when you apply the finish and not frost it up as much. If you do frost it up, uh, applying a little thinner will clear it up. Failing that, allow that to dry and apply a gloss coat. It will revert back to its original color and intensity. Then you can go back to buffing that and applying a matte finish. Semi-gloss may also be known as eggshell or satin finish. It's as the name describes it, it's sort of glossy, but not completely glossy nor matte. All it is is gloss paint with a slight amount of uh, matte properties. This is an advantage is if you want this to be its final finish. It's quite popular for things like clothing on uh, figures or if you want to distinguish something that's matte and something else to capture your eye or you want to have something glossy and the rest of it uh, semi-gloss. It's down to artistic interpretation though if you intend to have uh, a finish that's complete dead matte Instead of applying a decal over a gloss surface, semi-gloss is also uh, an idea for protecting and sitting on top. It just gives you a wider range of uh, options and flexibility. Next section, we'll talk about weathering, decals, and anything else that you can put on top of a painted, finished surface. It's going to be more so of a list than a heavy exploration as there's a lot of content out there that can go into greater detail and this is focusing more on painting aspects and uh, what can exactly sit on top of a paint. A lot like paints and vehicles, a lot of these products that you'll be applying, if wet, has a vehicle of its own, most popular being enamel. Now going back to remember the pegs and the peg holes that our kit would sit into, gluing and all that, Bandai high impact polystyrene is a bit weak in those exact joints to oils, enamels, that sort of vehicle. Once you have these fluids passing over the paint and seeping into all sorts of cracks and whatnot, being our washers and filters, this is when they soften up to the point where when they're assembled, and not given the full one to two weeks for uh, chemically harden and mature fully, these pegs will uh, break and aspects of your model will fall apart. 
Two ways around that. Once you apply your weathering solution, do not touch or assemble your kit for a number of weeks. Put it away, ignore it, let it to slowly evaporate and regain its full strength. Number two is you prime everything, every peg, every hole, and then you mask it. At least there's a bit of a barrier, though utilizing some of the practices in the preparation of widening the holes and whatnot will also help. A lot of these additives we put over our paint, mostly decals, is to give us symbolism, detail, and images that we cannot paint ourselves, especially lettering and something that is so fine detail, it's not worth doing and it's easy to do on a transfer. It's a very thin piece of uh, plastic with adhesion on the back and on the front, uh, printer's ink or screen printer's uh, image burnt on that slides on as thin as a micron and another layer of uh, clear to make it look like it's actually pressed or a part of the paintwork. It's very delicate and just applying it is uh, prone to damage. It needs to be protected by uh, clear paint and uh, that is uh, the point of uh, adding this in the segment that such an object is uh, sandwiched. It will not be damaged by any of the paint or any of the vehicles but by trauma or abrasion. Weathering is applied over a surface of a kit to give it depth, dimension, definition, anything that uh, makes it more interesting and stands out from just a flat or glossy painted object which can appear quite uh, boring. Uh, light is not as harsh as uh, something that's only 10-15 centimeters tall opposed to a uh, machine that is about 20 meters uh, tall that is out on the elements. So we do apply these and they have an impact on the paint uh, as mentioned and also need to be sealed if they bring any properties of gloss and matte and you want a uniformed finish or finishes at your choice and not the products left behind. Many things such as washes, very very thin paint where the pigment is so stretched out it's like water and it seeps into all the cracks and low points. These apply very well on a glossy surface, can be sealed by either. Due to having a very slow drying vehicle, they need a maximum amount of time to harden before further paint is applied over. They may splash out of whatever panel trench detail they're in and uh, ruin the surface. Any sort of highlight uh, weathering, edging or damage can be done by uh, pigment. It's sort of a pastel -y powder that can be found in paint, though there's no vehicle or uh, any sorts of uh, fluid added to it. It's applied dried. It attaches itself very, very well to a matte surface, though it can be removed, washed off or rubbed off. Another layer of a matte coat or any other coat will allow it to be permanently sandwiched in between the clear paint. On a glossy surface, it's far too small and smooth and will not stick as well and may fly off from first. handling, touching, all of uh, that sort of stuff. As each of these layers are being sandwiched and not to do too many layers or coats or stretch it out, consider your scheduling and ordering of what works with gloss, what works with matte, and you've got the least amount of layers sandwiched or uh, wasted so you're not thickening the surface too much. Also, subassemble a bit to entire limbs and components when doing this step after the paint session. Makes more sense with shadowing and where grime can sit on. Apply your gloss coat, look at the decals first, and then everything else that may be uh, wet or in the way of uh, filters, washes, inks. You can put a coat to protect the decal before adding these sort of uh, heavy solvents. And then look at doing a matte coat, applying your pigments, your powder, your weathering pencils, your scratching, chipping, all that sort of stuff. And that is on top of that layer, yet again to be protected, sandwiched in a final coat of whatever you choose, be it gloss, semi-gloss, matte or a mixture of a few of them. 
don't be afraid to play with uh, a scheme of uh, finishes. You can have certain areas you want the eyes to attract, such as a glossy lens, glass, mono eye, a metallic uh, element of a, a weapon or a joint or in a frame, and the outer area where it's all scuffed and armor and weapons or blunt and melee weapons, where there can be a mattish edge and it can be gradiently applied by airbrush in various areas. This is not really a topic that's talked about or played on a lot. Uh, with your weathering, lots of videos out there, everything from uh, fluid building up to uh, battle damage to where pigment and uh, rubble and dust attaches. Think how it suits in the real world and approach it as such. There's a lot more uh, theory and videos and talk about uh, realism, uh, anime versus real, uh, stylized science fiction, all that jazz, as well as what can potentially happen on Earth and space. A lot of research, a lot of reading, a lot of discussion can be had. It's very fun to explore, so definitely please enjoy. Next section, we'll talk about painting white or an overly white surface. You're going to come across a lot of Canon out of the box white finishes in Gundam and it can be quite difficult to get a coloured plastic into white with a single or a few passes of paint. Hobby paints have very poor uh, pigment density where artistic paints are quite superior though not as uh, easily utilised via our methods of application. You can overcome it though with a grey primer you're going to get quite a moneyed and uh, dull affair in the finish and complexion of the white. It's not going to be a true white, sort of more off or a very very light grey. There is a few ways to get a true white finish out of your model kits. First looking at your primer and base coat. Primers can be bought in white. As I uh, talked about in the primer section of this video, uh, primers are also job is to create a uniform color and intensity. So most likely they will have the thickest concentration of pigment density. The second thing to look at is some brands such as Mr. Color will have a base white or a character white where that white is uh, designed to have a thicker consistency as well as pigment density and should have a stronger frontage opposed to uh, other brands where they have their just standard density. When you look at some artistic paints they will actually tell you how translucent or solid they are for blending purposes. You can however buy the most expensive in the smallest quantity artistic acrylic. They have titanium pigment and would have the densest of all white finish. The most expensive compound of paint is pigment so it would pretty much be all pigment, a bit of binder, a bit of uh, vehicle or thinner and the additives. Putting a few drops of that in your hobby paints regardless of its vehicle or type will create it to be far more denser and it would cut back its uh, how translucent it will be over the base surface and the primed surface. Other ways around to get this is the uh, base coat or undercoat. If we're talking about reflecting light and if the base is absorbing light, a dark color, a gray color, you're putting uh, white on top and it's still drab. If you have something that's really reflective and then you paint white, it reflects light and it's going to look automatically brighter. Consider having silver as your undercoat to a few coats of white. Next is a polished application of metallics. Metallics can be quite wonderful in giving a real metal look. Some paint brands and companies have a very thick pigment. It doesn't look too good, it's very gritty, it's almost akin to glitter. And your cheaper uh, companies and paints have a tendency of being that way. Some of the lacquers and finer paints have what's known as super silvers or super metallics where they have the finest pigments 
and they reflect light really really nicely and gives it the appeal of being a real silver or a real stainless steel whatnot. They do however suffer whatever surface it goes onto. They also require to reflect light. The best way to reflect light underneath a metallic color is a gloss black finish. So your painting process would go as discussed in the gloss finish section. Surface preparation, polishing and whatnot. Prime, polish, gloss black surface. Make sure it's mirror finish, very, very nice. And in a wet manner, apply your uh, metallic paint. It is also very important what you select as your product. Alclad 2 has been the standard of uh, a fine metallic finish for many, many years. Though some of the uh, other up and coming uh, manufacturers such as Guy Note, SMS and a few other boutique uh, brands is uh, giving everyone else a run for their money and uh, creating these uh, wonderful products. They're great for inner frames, small details and all sorts of effects. You can get colored metallics, you can put over pearlescence and all sorts of uh, color shifting techniques. It is completely up to you how you utilize it to have a clean metallic polish look or even weathered and slightly dulled metallic effects. All of them are quite valid and they're quite beautiful. Be mindful that uh, clear coats and finishes also do change the look. Be very careful what glosses you put over, even if you have to buy a specialty product that uh, suits it, such as the uh, Alclad range of uh, clears, though generally uh, acrylic, very slow drying products work quite well in uh, retaining its uh, look, though enhances the uh, reflective sheen can be too glossy for some in a look that they're trying to achieve. The next effect we are looking at in this uh, picture of the Sinanju is what's known as uh, candy color or candy coat, where you got that uh, mirror finish metallic colored look. Instead of using a metallic red or uh, anything like that, you get the shiniest mirror chrome or mirror silver color that's uh, possible either by uh, Alclad, SMS, what's available. Uh, Molotow liquid chrome uh, is also quite a fascinating uh, product via uh, airbrush being more of a printer's ink. Then you put a clear paint over that that's uh, tinted to a color so clear red, clear blue, clear yellow the lighter the uniform coat is, the more shiny it is, the darker you go, the more interesting lacquered look that's achieved. If you go quite uh, thick, it can almost get an Iron Man armor look or uh, some of the uh, very, very shiny mobile suit designs and uh, other effects. The key to what goes over the metallic finish is how uniform. You don't want it blotchy. You want it to dry evenly so it doesn't um, frost and you want to have just a constant uh, consistency with hand-in-hand -hand surface preparation. It is one of the more advanced forms of uh, airbrushing and spraying. Some have managed and attempted to achieve with a, a rattle can, though with how thick the paint goes on and how hot it is with the coats underneath it could be easily ruined and it's just a trick of sandwiching each layer allowing each layer to dry and harden and when you have uh, lacquers sitting on top of lacquers the heat of the lacquer thinner on one coat reactivates the coat underneath as we talked about this in the lacquer video and causes issues if you want to have the safest uh, manner of uh, doing a candy effect consider having a different type of paint as your middle layer and one of the popular ones is enamel. Uh, Alclad makes lovely enamel candy products that does not uh, cook, reactivate or cause problems. Now as we are trying, learning, attempting, doing our projects, there could be times where with some of these more complicated projects you make a terrible mistake 
Some mistakes you can wait until the paint dries, hardens, you buff it out or reactivate it with uh, thinner. Though if it's too far gone, you do not have to throw your project in the bin. Uh, though there are methods and ways of stripping the paint without sanding it off or doing any uh, tedious job of uh, fixing it up. And that is using fluids to lift the paint off. Now depending on the paint vehicle that you've used, acrylics, polyurethanes, very easy, not a lot of bites. Ones of harder bite or that the paint has uh, hardened and uh, sitting on there for a long time such as old enamel, this can be a bit tricky. Whatever you do, you do not strip the paint with the solvent that you've used to thin the paint, probably except for uh, isopropic alcohol. That, uh, because it's used, or some of these properties like uh, enamel or uh, lacquer thinners, bite into the plastic, melt a very minicule to micro level of uh, surface to dig and trench in. Using that same formula, you'll melt the whole plastic to nothing or severely make the part brittle or completely damaged. There is specialty uh, hobby products for uh, stripping paint, such as the SMS paint stripper. You can also utilize uh, other fluids that do an excellent job, yet still retain the polystyrene uh, uh, in its original state and not brittle, damaged, or dissolved in any way. Make sure to follow a tutorial or advice from someone else who's conducted tests. And if it's your first time, do a test on a, a bit of runner or something like that. In America, purple powder seems to be uh, very uh, popular, which is easily purchasable from uh, a Walmart. Uh, everyone else, if you're using um, weaker paints, uh, Dettol, uh, window cleaner uh, from one end. And for the harsher end, your enamel and uh, lacquers, brake fluid seems to be very popular. My personal go-to is uh, liquid bleach or gel bleach. Allow a certain amount of time that you need to soak. Uh, have a sealable container so kids, pets, other people won't get into it. Stain their clothes, drink, fumes, all that jazz. Pull out, scrub down with something like a toothbrush, rinse underwater, keep repeating until the sufficient amount of paint is off that you can repaint. Please note, if you are using fillers and putties that are also solvent based, they will also come out, fall out, dissolve in the process. And the final step or discussion, how do I prove or get good at this or achieve my goals in wanting to take the next level or step in painting? Now. With this proportion of the video, I have uh, part off as much knowledge in as many directions as you can potentially go into and with what you want to do. Achieving everything in this video is not necessary or immediately or a short period of time is practically near impossible. Take very small steps, achieve one thing and then move on. Look at getting an even clean uh, surface on a kit, maybe a bright colour starting from surface prep, a primer, a colour job, a slight amount of uh, detail and freehanding or masking. Follow that up with uh, the lowest and basic level of uh, decal and uh, detailing weathering work and seal it off with a finish. Look at it and uh, do this first on a very, very basic model that has a few parts where you can practice other things like nub removal or filling of seam lines. I find in the, the Gunpla Gundam Sphere, the Petite Bear guys are absolutely excellent at being quite cheap and uh, a test bed for uh, new techniques or schemes. Do one done up in a basic matte and a gloss scheme with uh, your basic uh, definition. When you're ready to move on to things like shading, gradients, a metallic finish or a candy finish, these are very good as if you make a mistake, you're not too dis, um, satisfied or disgruntled as it's a very small surface and very little work has uh, gone into it to get to the level it's at before you do something that has a lot more parts involved and time consuming. The trick is doing it, getting a result, repeating and a result and improving upon it. The more you do it, the longer you've been doing for it, 
the better you get it at it and the more dedication that is applied this is where the bear guys are great as you can roll them out as quick and easy as you can then you replicate it on a bigger better badder project and uh, you make mistakes you learn by it you repeat it you try to attempt it again with less mistakes less issues once your technique gets really good then you can start focusing on personal aspects creative aspects and getting that uh, touch that is you and getting that definition and realism where it goes from a plastic walking um, awkward looking toy robot into a piece of work that is either realistic and you can't quite tell what the scale is or an art piece where it's quite stylized or achieving the look you wish to achieve keep going keep practicing keep building keep painting if you're doing activities uh, such as uh, hand painting, uh, paint in a spoon nice and smooth from time to time. If you're airbrushing, do lines on a piece of paper. Try to get them as tight and neat, uh, prevent the splattering, and learn the instrument uh, to strip it and clean it as quickly as you can. Time is a factor. The quicker you can get certain aspects uh, done that are tedious, the more fun you get into the creative uh, aspects of the hobby. One thing I have noticed uh, hanging around some professional champion, very, very ski skilled and long time modelers are their ability to achieve a finish, a look, a project or an element in a very timely manner because they're repeating a process they've done previously. The picture that's currently up of uh, the green Gelgoog looking kit is done by Mark Carlyle that won the Australian Gunpla Builders World Cup as well as a few other projects and a bit of an inspiration of uh, all the uh, knowledge and techniques and methods, thought processes used in this video plus more in the design of shadowing and layout to create something that's uh, quite appealing to uh, look at. So studying these techniques, getting an understanding, grasping these uh, techniques, these methods, what we talked about in this video. Down in the description section is more information and physically how to do it from uh, my hand, airbrush, whatever, to a surface. You going off, replicating, showing the understanding by being able to do the same or get a result that's quite satisfactory. Repeat the result approve upon the result, apply it to your model and mix and match it to your taste until you've got something and you keep working on that forward. That will get you from the beginner watching this video that's uh, used to snapping kits or doing something without any of this background knowledge to improving into your own style and being a distinguished modeler yourself. It is not that hard at all. There is a lot of information but attempting it and working on it is quite enjoyable it's a journey it's a lot of fun but not hard for more resources and how to attempt and achieve a lot of these techniques if not uh, all of them from a video to video basis don't worry none of them are two two and a half hours long mostly in 10 minute uh, bites airbrushing ones are a tad longer uh, obviously for the involvement in the description section of this vi very video is a whole library of uh, each titled and video of interest where you need more. If you want to talk about it, discuss it, pick my brains, as well as other people from my community, in the description section as well is the McConaughey Study Group. It's a Facebook group to talk about uh, where you need help. You can show what you've done, your work in progress, your experiments, and there can be a discussion, criticism, tips, help, and more uh, supporting evidence or work from other people's benches, where to go from there. I hope this video was instrumental and very, very hel helpful in giving an idea from which direction, how you want to go about painting, and what exactly you want to achieve based off uh, finishes and models that you really enjoy, and you want to replicate it or do something that's uh, very similar to it. None of it is hard, it's just process, it's waiting, it's an understanding of curing, time, product, tools, and practicing it. Not hard at all, and there's more than sufficient uh, resources out there. 
it's just important not to roll with the incorrect information and trying to replicate a result where you're not quite heading in the right uh, journey with the right stuff and that could be frustrating in making mistakes and rectifying it where it's just not quite right you should have uh, no issues in checking sources of uh, other tutorials including mine and uh, look at multiple sources of uh, videos work in progresses tutorials advice and uh, groups to see if there is uh, a consistent trend of uh, people uh, sprouting advice and then repeating it themselves into a uh, finished kit with all that d done and said and if you reach it at the very end of the video thank you very much for holding through and uh, thank you very much for your support stay tuned for more content we do upload once a week to twice a week if you have any questions very happy to uh, answer them here or interact in uh, any manner though I'm not too sure if you would with uh, everything that has been uh, delivered uh, have a look at the description section um, refer back to it if you want to see certain other videos, techniques, trips and all that sort of stuff that uh, is uh, done in front of a camera and with uh, actual uh, a result and we'll see you guys later thank you very much for watching